when we're trying to pick a target for our innovation, the customer is the wrong target. It's the job the customer is trying to do that we need to understand. And I'd like to just illustrate this with a silly story <coughs> about milkshakes. One of the big fast food restaurant chains was trying to accelerate the sales of its milkshakes. <coughs> they segmented their markets by product category. You walk into the restaurant, here's the menu board, the sandwiches are on the left, the dessert menu is here, milkshakes are a line item on the dessert menu. They could tell you exactly how many milkshakes Burger King, Wendy's, and McDonald's sold. They actually even had psychographic and demographic profiles of the kinds of people that had a proclivity to buy milkshakes. And so they would invite people who fit the profile into research settings, and they'd ask them, could you tell us how we could improve our milkshakes so you'd buy more of them? They'd get very clear feedback. They would then improve the milkshake on those dimensions, and it had no impact on sales or profits whatsoever. So one of our colleagues went into their restaurant with a different question on his mind, and that was, I wonder what job people are hiring these milkshakes to do for them. So he stood there for 18 hours and took very careful data. When did they buy it? What were they wearing? Were they alone? Did they buy other food with it? Did they eat it in the restaurant or did they leave? And it turned out that nearly half of the milkshakes were sold in the very early morning. It was the only thing they bought. They were always alone and they always got in the car and drove off with it. Well, to figure out what job they were trying to do, my friend then came the next morning and stood outside the restaurant and confronted these people as they left milkshake in hand. And in language they could understand, he asked, excuse me please, but could you tell me what job you were trying to do that caused you to come here and hire a milkshake? And as they would struggle to answer, he'd try to help them by asking, well, think about the last time you were in the same situation needing to get the same job done, but you didn't come here to hire a milkshake. What did you hire? And it turned out that they all had the same job to do. That is, they had a long and boring drive to work. And they just needed something to do while they were driving to keep themselves occupied. One hand had to be on the wheel, but somebody had given them another hand and there wasn't anything in it. And they just needed something to do while they drove. They weren't hungry yet, but they knew they'd be hungry by 10 o'clock. So they wanted something that would just stay in their stomach for the morning. Good question, what do I hire when I have this job to do? You know, come to think of it, last Friday, my wife gave me a banana for the job, but it didn't do it well at all. It was gone in three minutes, I was hungry by 7.30, and if you promise not to tell my wife, I hire donuts a lot more than she would like. But they don't do it well at all, because they crumb all over my clothes, they get my fingers sticky, they're gone too fast. Yeah, I hire bagels, but geez, they're dry and tasteless. So if I try to spread cream cheese or jam on them, then I have to steer the car with my knees, and then if the phone rings, I got big trouble. I remember once I hired a Snickers bar for the job, but I felt so guilty I've never hired Snickers again. Let me tell you, though, when I come here and I hire this milkshake, it is so thick and viscous that it easily takes me 25 minutes to suck it up that straw. I don't care what the ingredients are. All I know is it keeps me full all morning, and it fits right here in my cup holder. And it turns out that the milkshake does the job better than any of the competitors, and the competitors aren't just Burger King and McDonald's milkshakes, but it's bananas, donuts, bagels, Snickers bar, coffee, and a bunch of other things. Well, then it turned out that in the afternoon and evening, the milkshake was hired for a very different job, primarily by fathers who have been saying no to their children all week long. And whenever they say no, they feel bad about themselves because they want to feel kind and loving. And so they've just been looking for something innocuous to which they can say yes. So I'm standing there at the counter with my son. I order my meal, he orders his meal, and then he looks up at me like only a son can and says, Dad, can I have a milkshake? And finally, here's something I can say yes to. So I put my hand on his shoulder and I say, sure, you can have a milkshake. You watch what then happens. It's consumed in the restaurant with other people with a meal. Dad finishes his meal, son finishes his meal. And then he picks up that crummy milkshake and it just takes him forever to suck it up that thin little straw. 
And dad waits patiently for a while, and then he waits impatiently for a while, and then he just says, Spence, we got to go, and so they throw it away half consumed. So then the restaurant invites me as a member of the demographic segment that has a proclivity of buying milkshakes, and they say, so Clay, tell us how we can improve the milkshake so you buy more of them. What am I going to tell them? Because I hire it for two fundamentally different jobs. And then they average my response with all of the other 35 to 55 year old male slobs with children, and they come up with a one size fits none product that doesn't do well any of the jobs that it's being hired to do. Well, you can see, I think, that understanding the job helps you understand very clearly what kinds of improvements will get traction in the market and what kinds won't. So for the morning job, how would you improve it? Well, you certainly would want to make it more viscous to take even longer to suck it up the straw. You'd also probably stir in tiny chunks of fruit, but not to make it healthy because they do not hire it to become healthy, but just to add interest to the commute. At random, they'd suck up a piece of fruit and it would add variety to the morning routine. And then you take the dispensing machine from behind the counter, put it in front of the counter, and give people a prepaid swipe card so they could just dash in, gas up, and go, and never get caught in a line. And of course, the afternoon and evening product would have to be formulated and marketed very differently. But I hope this helps you understand why the job, rather than the customer, is the necessary unit of analysis. Peter Drucker saw this a long time before we did when he said that the customer is rarely buying what the company thinks.